Yo, 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 it's your boy Isaac Gonzu back again with more Halloween or half month hot couture um, duggery. Is that a word? We're just gonna keep adding H words to this, this thing, this, this event. It's kind of fun. It, I made it up on the spot like last week, so. We're just gonna keep going. Hello everyone, my name is Isaac Hansu, come here, VTuber, uh, rap artist, extraordinaire, um, ponderer, wanderer, and occasionally, launderer. Uh, that's not money laundering, that's laundry. I do laundry every once in a while. <laughs> I, look, my clothes are clean. I just don't do the laundry all that often. My wife likes doing the laundry. Anyway, uh, welcome, Anna. Ahoy. How's it be? And uh, welcome, Hana B69. We got the first. Mmm. Spicy. Today, we're going to be doing a little bit of haunted Google Maps exploration. I have here a spreadsheet of haunted locations. Oh, I should probably like not blind people with that. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, first place we're going to go to is the castle of good hope. Here we can see the parking lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to see. Um... Oh, you can go inside. Yes. All right. Let's drop ourselves down. Parking at your own risk. Uh, so this is the Castle of Good Hope. Um... Let's read a little bit about it while we walk around, shall we? <laughs> cool idea for a stream. Well, thank you. Uh, how do I get in? Whoa. Oh, there's a gift shop. Well, that's lovely. Uh-huh. Uh. Oh. Uh, uh. Um. Visitor info. Dining, news, layout, events, gallery. Home. All right. Castle of Good Hope. The history. Uh, let's see. During the Second Boer War, the part of the castle was used as a prison and the former cells remain to this day. Um, let's, let's see if we can grab our little guy. Okay, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. It's very bright. I imagine they don't be letting people in here late at night. I'm gonna be hanging out while I draw tonight. Ooh, what are you drawing? <gasps> the restrooms. Oh, we can't go in. <laughs> someone's taking a picture of someone taking a picture. Mm-hmm, spooky. No. Uh, Let's see, is there anything else that's like haunted about this place? It was a prison. Gonna be practicing emotes again. Just wanna keep getting better. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Uh, let's see, can we go to this spot? Or this spot? Oh gosh. 
Look at that. Oh wait, that's actually cool. All right, well, this is not really a spooky place, is it? It's more like a very cool cultural place. I mean, if you have a castle, you don't just want to keep it like this all the time. You want to hold events, right? Well, you should definitely keep practicing emotes because apparently everybody is getting like way more emote slots uh, for free or something like that. Actually, I haven't even looked at that yet. Let me go to my emotes. What are they dropping those? Not yet. But apparently everybody's getting more emote slots. And that is super cool. So I'm sure that tons of people are going to want more emotes uh, very soon. I heard everyone's getting more slots for animated ones. Is it just animated ones? I suppose. All right, next we're going to Lar Nach Castle. Wait, no. Larnach Castle. In New Zealand. I do want to check out some more animated emote slots though. Ooh, this one's got a lot of cool places inside. Whoa. Oh, look at that. Little path around, little path around, little path around. All right, what's spooky about Larnock Castle? Larnock Castle history. Dunedin's must see visitor attraction. Dang, uh, isn't that where like Venom is from? I'm doing this way too early. Can we see anything spooky? Check the windows. I haven't looked into animating my emotes yet. Seems like a whole nother monster to tackle. Look at the window. Oh wait, it went away. Look in the windows. So actually I've been using an open source software named uh, Neutron recently to do some animation for the very first time. And my gosh, it is so powerful. I did not realize how much you can do with just simple video compositing. Uh, here is a statue of a girl and a bird. That's what it looks like anyway. Yep, this girl just has a pet flamingo. Oh, and they were like re-renovating it too. The castle is privately owned and cared for by the Parker family, who purchased it as their home in 1967. Decades have been spent on the castle's restoration, with the family having restored empty buildings from ruin and assembled a large collection of original New Zealand period, period furniture and antiques. Nice. Scandalous and tragic stories, spectacular tower views and a garden of international significance complete this enjoyable, award-winning experience. What are the scandalous and tragic stories? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, it was William James Moodyer Lenark of Scottish descent. Oh, that looks like a head, doesn't it? Who built the castle. Let's, um, 
let's see. It looks like we there are a few places to go inside or on top, maybe. Ooh, look at that. Wait a minute. Are you wearing Jean-Paul Gaultier's Ahum? Are you wearing Jean-Paul Gaultier's Ahum? Welcome, Venet. <laughs> I've always preferred digital art because I can control how shaky lines are. Yep, this is your town. This is uh, Dunedin. This is the castle. I was, I was hoping to get you in here for this. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're we're checking out uh, Larnox Castle. Let's go inside. Can we go inside? Ooh. So this is New Zealand craftsmanship and culture. Gotta say, the music is really adding, adding to the, uh, the effects here. Let's check out another room. Oh, that's just the top again. Inside. Ooh, a piano. Uh, apparently, uh, a bunch of people in the original family died over the course of that first era. It's actually really cool to be in, but it has a weird feeling when you walk around inside of it. It's not huge, but it definitely has a scary vibe. We are in Dunedin, New Zealand, visiting Lanark Castle. This is a castle that was once, was once owned by William Lanark, and apparently he and like half of his immediate family all met their ends in this very castle. But how are you today? Well, I'm, uh, I'm doing well. The staff have free counseling as well to deal with the issues they feel and see. Yeah, I, I'm not a big believer in the supernatural. However, I do believe that the stories that we tell ourselves are truth no matter what stories they are. So if you tell yourself that you're a strong, independent person and you don't need no uh, support and you're fighting against capitalism, then that is your truth, right? Which, you know, can be good, but it also can be detrimental, right? And if you know that this castle has I don't know. Featured the deaths of many. Oh, this is a great shot. Look at this. Great location. Well done, Alice Wu. Stories have to come from somewhere. The Grey Lady haunts the ground. She's been seen by many there. I'm guessing the Grey Lady would be... Um, either Eliza Guiza... William Lenark's first wife, who died at age 38, or Elisa's half-sister, Mary Aline, who also died at age 38. Mm. That is a bit spooky. It's only a 20 minute drive from mine, but there's, I've only, yet yeah, I've only been there twice in my life. Well, that's understandable. Man, the, uh, the like random pair of legs and the bent door frame really give this a spookier vibe than uh, <laughs> it normally would have. Uh, let's see if we can get a good view of the front. Oh, no, that's from the top again. That's from the top again. Top again. 
Oh, another interior room. I wonder whose room this was. This was taken, this photo was taken in December 2018, uh, which is interesting because, I mean, cameras have come a long way since then, I think. You can stay the night there, I think. I bet you can. Book your visit online. High tea plus castle and, ah, you can have tea. Dinner. Yes, there's Lenark Lodge. There's stable accommodations where you can stay in the, the stables. Oh, I mean, if you're, if you're into like medieval culture and stuff, staying in the stables actually sounds kind of fun, doesn't it? Just like Baldur's Gate 3. Some of these photospheres aren't working correctly. You can stay there, but not in the castle itself, just beside it in the lodge. I see. <laughs> Crundle, have you been to Dunedin? Many times? Dang. Look at that. We're making connections. Ah, here we go. I want to just see the front. Can we, like, step back a bit? Ooh, that's such a cool... Look at that. I've never seen architecture quite like this with the mix of stone and glass and wood. It's okay. <laughs> Dude, then, it's okay. You know. We chillin'. We chillin' in Dude, then. April 2016. <laughs> I love it, but I'm biased. I was born and raised here, and I'm still here now. Sometimes, listen, I'm, I'm definitely of the opinion that people should travel and find the place that suits them the best. But sometimes the place that you're in just works, right? The architecture is fantastic. Look at this architecture. Ah, I love the little, I love the little, uh, decorations on the fence. Um, we zoom in. Yeah, look at these little spirals and stuff like that. Lions and eagles. This is cool. And the tower. I guess that's the tower that everybody looks down off of. The train station is amazing. Oh, and the Cadbury factory. Um, well, you know what we can do here? Uh, let's just close this. I don't know anything about Dundin. But can we see the Dundin train station? I mean, this looks like a train station. Nah, the octagon. Oh wait, we saw the octagon. Uh, last time we, last time we did one of these, we saw the octagon. The Cadbury factory is long gone. How much is the rent on this place? On uh, Lennox Castle? Can't imagine it's cheap. I mean, look, this is like 21 bucks just to get in. That's a, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be expensive to rent it out. I do wanna see this train station though. Let's just type it in. Din Din Railways. Wait a minute, no way. That's, that's not in Dunedin. All right. Oh, there's so many photospheres. Okay. Ooh. Oh, 
Look at that. Oh, that is a cool looking building. I've never seen architecture quite like this before. Look at the, the banded pillars and, oh my gosh, the, what, these, oh man, I need to learn more architecture terms. These little lookouts and, oh cool, tower, the clock tower, and it's, it's only on the one side too. I love that kind of asymmetrical design. Scottish inspired, that is cool. Well, it's not Scottish, it's New Zealand. But yeah, Scottish heritage, for sure. Pretty cool. Oh, there's Cadbury. Uh, can we, oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is this is a picture from 2023. And they're doing they're doing reconstruction now. Uh, but if you go over here, it's a picture from 2017, and you can see the Cadbury factory. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're like traveling through time. The silos were the last to be taken down. Wild. Zoo Neeland, that's correct. You can tell someone is from the south there, they roll their R's. I love rolling R's. There's some dialects of German that roll their R's, and it's lovely. Very cool. Oh, that is such a cool building. I can see why they kept these pictures. And here's from 2019. Two thousand nineteen. Two thousand twenty-three. And the silos are gone. You were not born with the R roll ability? Really? Really? It's important for a lot of dialects. <laughs> like Scottish, you gotta roll your arms. We went on a tour a couple years back and it was gross. The smell at the top was so gross. Off of milk and chocolate, stuff, chocolate solids that made me vomit. I roll my eyes really bad. <laughs> I won't do it. Yeah. There's that thing that you can do to children where they're like, I love sweet things. I really want sweet things. Give me more sweet things. And then you give them just like a teaspoon of vanilla extract, just straight vanilla. And they're like, oh, now I know what it means for something to be too sweet. <laughs> Took the tour when the factory was still active, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I like touring factories. It's like the, um, how it's made, but just one at a time, right? Wild. Yeah, that's a big factory. Can you still see the... Can you still see the, uh, whatchamacallit? No, I don't care about this. Dang, that, that train station is definitely worth the detour, though. But we have a ton of like just a ton of places to check out. So the next place is going to be, so when you come in on holiday, bro. <laughs> the next place is going to be the Cementerio de la Recoleta. Oh, look at that. You can walk down the paths all over the place. Let's just drop down here. Oh my God, look at this place. You know, I'm so used to seeing cemeteries like essentially being fields with gravestones. I didn't even think that there could be just a 
stone floored cemetery with all mausoleums. But I guess, yeah, man, there can be. Fancy, fancy. The Cadbury tour was awesome when I was a kid, could see a lot more. Unlimited chocolate, and it was just a better experience. Dude, anywhere with unlimited chocolate is probably like insanely high on a kid's list of places to go. Where is this cemetery? Uh, let's read about it. This cemetery is in Argentina. Argentina. Now, give me just a minute because I am extremely bad at geography. Uh, Argentina is in South America, right? Just gonna open up another Google Maps window real quick. Oops. Where is Argentina? Don't cry for me, Argentina. Yeah, it's like in the south of South America. Now you know. <laughs> 22 hours by plane. We'll slide you down. We'll slide down when y'all have a TwitchCon to crash. Hell yeah. The cops are incompetent here so we can get away with ease. Nice. Yeah, let's do it. The wildest uh, TwitchCon. Oh, can I? Let's translate. Uh, Firefox now has a translate button. And let's go. Another reason not to use Google Chrome. Oh, they just do speeding tickets. All right, let me read you a spooky story about this place. Well, I click randomly and walk around. Luis Maria, daughter of, daughter of playwright Enrique Garcia Veloso, died of leukemia in 1925 at the age of 15. His mother on the edge of madness got a special permit to spend the night in a corner of the crypt. One night, a young man from the Port of Buenos Aires' high society saw a crying girl in the back street of Recolata Cemetery, fully dressed in white. She approached and, dazzled by her beauty, invited her to have coffee in a cafe called La Veritita. After the, co after the cafe, they kissed and she said her name was Light Mary. Suddenly she ran away, shouting that it was already late. As she got up, she poured coffee into the sack that she had put on her shoulders during her crying. He followed her, but her figure faded at the entrance of the cemetery. Desperate, he began to hit the gate incessantly until the, car the carer let him in. And there on the first street, in the vault bearing his name, he could see the unimaginable on a lying figure of marble there was his stained bag of coffee. Below, in the sculpture, he recognized the face of the crying girl, the one who overturned his coffee, the one he had kissed and lost forever. So essentially, dude tries to get lucky and accidentally goes out with a ghost. Rough, rough time there, bro. The Lady in White. As soon as they see someone going one kilometer over the speed limit, they honor. That's bad for me. I'm used to going at least five to ten over the limit at all times. That's the beauty that they are worried about patrolling the teens, doing that, profiling the teens, doing nothing else. Ardale Hospital, Australia. Are any Australia places in here? Unfortunately, we don't. We can check it out though. Let's see. Ardale Hospital. Wait, or is it Airydale? 
Aradale. Airedale Hospital. That's in the United Kingdom. Aradale Hospital, Australia. Ooh, now that looks hot. <laughs> Fuck them kids, New Zealand PD. Okay, well, this is creepy. Uh, let's read about Ardale Hospital, Australia. Uh, where's the... History. I mean, we can just go to Wikipedia. Ardale Mental Hospital was an Australian psychiatric hospital located in Ararat, a rural city in southwest Victoria, Australia. Originally known as Ararat Lunatic Asylum, Ardale and its two sister asylums at Kew and Beechworth were commissioned to accommodate the growing number of lunatics in the colony of Victoria. Did you know that lunatic is based on the, um, the, the term luna, like the moon? I actually heard a really interesting theory, the reason why people thought the moon made them go crazy. The moon preceded bouts of lunaticism is because they didn't have a whole lot of light, especially in, um, you know, peasant areas. Right? So if you live your life expecting the nighttime to be dark, and then once a month, it's just incredibly bright because the moon is full, you know, you're going to all of a sudden not get a lot of sleep. And sleep deprivation is one of the causes of you know, manic behavior. Over its 130 history, year history, the hospital has been sent to be the location of over 130,000 deaths. It's now abandoned and considered to be one of Victoria's creepiest sites. With over 60 buildings on 100 acre and countless reports of paranormal activity, it is most definitely haunted. That's from the Google search, huh? <laughs> My mom worked at a hospital that was a ward for mental health patients when it was a full moon. They didn't really see outside that would change. It's supposed to have something to do with the gravitational pull it has. I don't know how true that is, but my mom said they would just act up a lot on the full moon and didn't see it outside at nights. Well, we talked about this, like the stories you tell yourself become true, right? If, and, and people, people who, have uh, mental illnesses are well known for being very sensitive to the moods of others, right? If you're if you're the type of person who's very sensitive to the moods of others, and there's someone in your area um, who is getting tense or. Uh, telling other people to look out because it's going to be a full moon, like you're absolutely going to start believing it, right? You're going to start believing that something takes over you in the darkness, in the light of the moon.
Uh, let's check out another place. It's called Wakari Hospital, also in Dindin. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed the temporary rave. Uh, my mouse slipped. That's all I can say. Where's this castle supposed to be? Um, was burnt down with a lot of people in it, a Seacliff Hospital. Oh, there's just pictures. Okay, we were like in the area. Ooh. Ooh. Cool castle. Cool castle. I don't know too much about this one. It's the world's most haunted castle, a turbulent and bloody history, used as a fortress, home, and tomb. Leaf Castle is a home to many fascinating and sometimes horrific spirits. That is quite the tomb. Built in the early 1500s under the supervision of the powerful and warring Otarofan, Leap Castle has been the center of much bloodshed and brutal atrocities. Atrocities. Yeah, I imagine going to one of these places, even just knowing that it um, exists, like, these stories exist, the history of bloodshed exists, is probably enough to make your brain feel unnerved. I love the hollowed out style of old castles though. Look, like this side is like still kind of there and this side is over here. Not sure, but it was out Seacliff. I've been there, the rebuild once, but it's gone now as well. The original site is still there with a plaque for the remembrance. You gotta throw down a plaque, right? All right, let's try to find some, some real creepy places. The Ailo, can we? Are you not even allowed to like get closer to it? Looks like there's some They're either vineyards or abandoned stuff. Man. Next one. Grand Castle Romania. Ooh. Let's check out Chateau de Brissac. Oh. Doesn't that look Devil's Tramping Ground? Maybe. Yeah. I think that's, oh, like Bram Stoker? Bram Stoker, though. That's the ca Dracula Castle or where the legend came from. We'll definitely have to check that out then. Uh, we'll go there next. But look at this. Oh, look at this. This looks like the house from um, Knives Out, really.
Now that is a creepy fireplace. That fireplace is just, you know, begging to turn and look at you when you're just not expecting it. It is, it is the tallest castle in France. It's got seven floors. That's pretty slick. Where's the history? Give me that history. History. In English, please. Oh no, white people. Duna is full of old buildings, most are condemned, very unsafe to be in, they should be taken down. If we had a decent earthquake like Christchurch, should we be in trouble? Ugh. Yeah, there comes a point when you have to exchange, you know, historical preservation for safety. This is a pretty cool house though. I mean, doesn't it look like the Knives Out house? It definitely looks like the Knives Out house. All right, let's look up Grand Castle Romania. Castle, Castellol Grand. Dramatic 14th century castle, former royal residence, an alleged legend of Count Dracula inspiration. The Heritage Society won't allow it. Yeah. You can't even like, you know, open the wall, but like iron or steel struts in there and then close the wall, right? Impossible. Dude, who's taking these like flyover pictures? They're dope AF. Can we get inside the castle? He does it for the castle walls. You go past them and they're all boarded up. They look like shit and an eyesore and yet they still stand. Yeah. I mean, isn't, isn't it a good idea rather than having something that's falling apart to have someone rebuild it in that style, right? It won't be the exact same, but you know, you lose the original materials and yet you gain, you know, remastered architecture, right? Where's my architecture remaster? Why is there a gong? This just in, Dracula's favorite instrument, the gong. <laughs> oh, it's Dracula's castle, sure. Let's put some, let's put some, you know, fantastic torture devices in it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean, that does look like it would hurt. Is that an Iron Maiden? It is, or was. Can you really say like, this is uh, this is just a pitchfork, <laughs> epic. This is just like history porn, you know? This is not 
like historical accuracy. This is just like, oh yeah, uh, we we did um, we found Dracula's supposed castle, and so now we're gonna fucking turn it into a murder exp ex exhibition. Don't think I would like to be stabbed by a pitchfork, to be honest. Fun fact: a lot of torture devices are just made up. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Since I imagine a lot of them would be scarier to hear about than experience, right? <laughs> it's a lot scarier to hear about an Iron Maiden than it is to, uh, you know, be threatened by one. Yeah, imagine if you were, imagine if you were like, it's a cool castle though. Imagine if you were told, we're sentencing you to death. You're like, okay. We're sentencing you to death in the coolest way possible. Oh, okay. I mean, all right, we down. Yeah, let my blood flow out of the casket. Let my, let my screams be heard by the villagers. Make me a legend. My, my legacy will be my death. A lot were made up by museums to put asses in seats. Ah, the old Barnum and Bailey method. Yep. <laughs> Dress it up with things that were never in the castle, but we will for tourism. Hell yeah. That said, I mean, this armor is probably like modeled off of legit armor. And I mean, some of this stuff is just like furniture, right? Surely Brand Castle had furniture in it. No, Dracula needs no furniture. Look at this mattress. I just want you to, to take a gander at this mattress. Does that look comfortable to you? I know it's hard to tell without touching it, but like, seriously, if I'm going to be seduced by a vampire, they better fucking pay out the ass for that mattress because we're breaking it. This is a cool castle. <laughs> it's not even heart shaped, SMH my head. God. I can sleep on the ground with a rock for a pillow, so that looks super comfy to me. Legit, I'm, I'm definitely on the firmer side of mattresses, but my wife is on the softer side of mattresses. So, we need one of them sleep numbers, you know. What's your sleep number? 1,000. I want it to break my back. No, not that. <laughs> 69, of course. That's the sleep number. Oh. Uh, we got any other good castles on here? We went to Lenark Castle. Oh, there's Edinburgh Castle. Why don't you check out Edinburgh Castle? Edinburgh Castle, Scotland. Oh my gosh, it's huge! Edinburgh Castle viewing point. Alright, there's gotta be... Yeah, there's so many spots around here. Done it hard before. Camping in the middle of nowhere isn't always as fun as it sounds. Rolled up a pair of jeans to put under my head. Ooh, look at that castle. Arr! Just giving me castle designs or D&D &D ideas. <laughs> um. So here's, so it's a called the Spectacular Old Fortress with city views. 
Let's check out one of those views. Yeah, I'm a big fan of camping, but I will have to admit that sleeping in the outdoors is tough, right? It's, it's not easy. Sleeping ain't easy. All right, let's just poke around. So this is Edinburgh, and here's Edinburgh Castle. Is that how you pronounce it, or is it Edinburgh? I bet it's Edinburgh. Oh, St. Margaret's Chapel, let's go. Um, this is kind of a terrible picture. What is happening here? Do we have information about this one? We do. Give me that. Where's the history? History. Background of the castle. <laughs> what about the catacombs with all the skeleton remains? Isn't that underneath Paris? Do I have that on this list? I was getting vague flashbacks to when I was in York and went through a haunted attraction about the city's history. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, there's just so much more history in these old castles. Right. Candy. Mons Meg. Not everyone who came to the castle enjoyed their stay. Even royals were sometimes known to complain about the traps. But life was truly grim for many of the prisoners who were locked up in the vaults below Crown Square. It was home to many hundreds of prisoners of war. Interesting. Where's the crypt at? Europe is indeed where the history comes from. I mean, if you've read Jared Diamond's Gun, Germs, and Steel, you know why that is. Oh my gosh, they're serving biscuits. <laughs> I hate to see what's under the Vatican. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. What's that? Uh, let's see. Um, Paris Catacombs. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely what we're, what we're looking for. The Paris Catacombs. The Catacombs of Paris. Let's see if we can find them. Uh, Illuminated labyrinth and former limestone mine with millions of ghoulishly arranged skeletons. Yeah, let's go. Oh my gosh, guys, the ghoulishly arranged skeletons are not wheelchair accessible. Damn it. But they do have gender neutral toilets. Thank God. Let's drop in. Wait, this is just Paris. Uh, where's the cat? Where's the skeletons? I've read Gun, this stream is epic. This is what I love to see. We're just exploring the world. I mean, like I said, travel is so important. And if you can't travel, at least you have the Google Maps. <gasps> Here we go. Oh my god, those are all bones. Those are skulls and those are leg bones. Oh boy. That is a lot. That is way more than I expected. Millions indeed. <laughs> Would be a pr pretty buffy ride in a wheelchair. I want to travel though. <laughs> I know. 
Uh, having a lot of kids, can't afford that if I wanted to. Yeah, when you have kids, travel, vacation is just like, um, oh, and they don't let you go any further. You can't get lost in the mines. Damn, I wanna get lost in the bone mines. Oh my gosh. Uh, wait, wait, go back, go back. Ooh, man. These have got to be well preserved. It's limestone. The bone zone. Yep. Here we go. Uh, awesomeness. Isn't ossification a, like bonification, right? Travel to Christchurch is about four hour drive, takes six hours with kids, costs an arm and a leg. Yeah, man. Like, it's just an epic journey, even like going, uh, <laughs> even like visiting the grandparents with all them kids, you know? But I mean, once they are all kind of like grown up and out of the house, you can do all the traveling you want, right? Dude, the, who's this lucky guy whose skull gets to be in the uh, black, right? Nobody cares about this guy. We all care about this guy. The Bone Zone. You read Guns, Germs, and Steel, but you only remember the stuff about food. Uh, essentially, essentially, Guns, Germs, and Steel is just like, of all of the conditions that are required for civilization to form, Europe basically had 90% of them better than the rest of the world. Like China had a few that were on par or slightly better than Europe, but Europe just had livestock and the right grains and the proper weather and the right like terrain requirements, right? Like Europe had everything. And even though life started in Africa, it flourished in Europe, and it's got nothing to do with race. That's the entire point of Jared Diamond's Gun Germs and Steel, is he lays out like 500 pages of research that just breaks down why racial discrepancies are not a valid basis for the difference in advancement of civilization throughout history. <laughs> Take him to Fordland, plenty of space to build them around, and there are Kiwis. Kiwis! My youngest has just turned five. It'll be a while till I can travel kid free. Eh, 13 years ish, right? At the very least, the next oldest is 11, right? So in seven ish years, you'll only have one kid and There'll be 12. Oh, and we're back on the streets of Paris. Remember the race part? I missed the Europe part. Need to reread it again. Honestly, <laughs> it's one of those books that makes you feel like you are incredibly prepared for whatever, like, you know, race based arguments you come across. But I just haven't encountered that many race-based arguments since I read the book and it's one of those things where it's like all my shower conversations are extremely detailed and accurate now even though uh don't have them in real life anymore <laughs> or ever uh let's see there's a ton of places we can go here Wouldn't change having kids, but it's the most expensive hobby in the world. That's true. It's expensive in time. It's expensive in um, money. It's expensive in energy. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go from Paris to Germany now. We're gonna check out Berg Entz. Oh my God, that looks pretty. All right. Oh, look at all these photospheres. Let's go. 
what photosphere was given the 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 privilege of being the photosphere that's a pretty good one. Oh, look at that thing it's so cool yeah give me some more interior shots there we go I love I love the uh, the German style of um, latticed architecture. Man, I need to learn more architecture terms. I said that said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm bad at architecture terminology. It's the the coming Alpberg Elts. A warm welcome to Elts Castle. Do we have information on this one? We do. Now, I, I, I could attempt to read this in Germany. But, um... Elts Castle is different. It survived all wars unscathed. Since its construction, it has been in the possession and care of a single family as an incomparable medieval architecture and an original decor from nine centuries. Armor, swords, halberds, and magnificent courtly gold and silver works. Yes, but why is it haunted? Who the fuck? It's a very pretty, it's a very pretty castle. I can't remember exactly, but I recall one of the notable parts of guns, germs, and steel being less conflict was present in tribes where people had an equal say in affairs. <laughs> yeah, a big part of the book is about the difference between tribal societies and hierarchical, like, um... Let's get some interior shots. We love, we love the, we love the exterior shots. Let's get some interior. Not all of these photospheres work. I want to see the halberds. As you can imagine, like every German popular location, there's a, a beer garden. Beer garden. Conflict was less prevalent in smaller tribes since everyone knew each other. Yeah, Guns, Germs, and Steel, aside from giving me a ton of arguments against race-based politics, uh, definitely had the effect on me of realizing how valuable it is to have small communities. It makes me wonder how the VTuber uh, commune would go. Ooh, the VTuber commune. I gotta work on that. Now this looks like something out of Elden Ring. Right. This little courtyard area. Go we'll have a boss fight down there. Fairmont Bant Springs Hotel, Canada. Don't know if it's haunted, but it looks amazing. Um <laughs> fought the Capra Demon in that courtyard. Bet. We will move over to North America in a bit. I kind of want to go by um, continent here. Look at that view, though. Dang, man, why don't we build buildings like this anymore? Castle's cool. Probably because this, this you know, structurally is not the best, you know. <laughs> it's just a lot of rocks stacked on each other. Ooh. Let's check out the Viaduct Tavern in London.
There it is. What's haunted about the Viaduct Tavern? I really, I really should just look these up on Wikipedia. The tavern is also known for reportedly being haunted. That's all we get, unless we watch a YouTube video. It's in London. My God. There's actually a few locations on here. Uh, oh, let's check out the London tombs. England is meant to be one of the most haunted places in the world. The London Bridge Experience and the London Tombs. Uh-huh. Give me one of these random circles here. Ah, uh, yeah. That is... Uh-huh. I don't know what I'm looking at. This is the cathedral, the cathedral and collegiate church of Saint Uh-huh. Come on, show me the show me the show me the underground. Coming straight from the underground. Oh, Khan, I had a good conversation the other day about uh, Kanye West, and I thought you would enjoy it. How his main contribution to things like sampling, he wasn't really the first one, he was just there when it was getting really popular, and he was skilled enough to take advantage of that. And people like the Wu-Tang Clan are kind of overlooked nowadays when it comes to that. Uh-huh. Okay, we're not really getting anything from the London tombs. You can see it. <sighs> yeah, I had this big breakdown of like how um, how new ideas are distributed throughout a genre. And basically, the people who are kind of like first past the post get a lot of leg up on um, exposure. I say it's because they're an older group. Well, but that's the thing, right? Even Wu-Tang Clan wasn't the first people to use soul samples in their, um, in their music. This is the, I don't know how to pronounce this, Oyabaku Forest in Romania. It is known as the creepiest forest in uh, in Romania. I mean, this does look like the, the trail that you go down right before the children come out of the woods and murder you, right? Oh my God, there's even a, there's even a bicycle on the ground. Uh, according to legend, the Hoya Forest is a hotspot of paranormal phenomena. Many ghost stories and urban legends contribute to its popularity as a forest attraction. <laughs> Skeptics. These are just stories for entertainment and lack any testable evidence. Bruh, just let people have fun. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, what is some, it's just a hotbed, a uh, hotbed of, uh, there's a suicide forest in Japan that's kind of banned. It's meant to be an evil place to look at, let alone visit. <clears throat> yeah, we're not going near that place.
Uh, this, this article from The Independent says, um, <laughs> the trees stop in a uniform oval where nothing grows and where, since official records began, nothing has grown. Once when I came here, says Alex, our guide, I found 60 people from Bucharest uh, trying to open a gate into another dimension. Bro. Apparently the trees grow really, really weird too here. Here's, here's the trees. The trees. No scientist can explain the strange growth patterns of the trees. Alex and his haunted trees. Look at Alex. Look at his haunted trees. Sounds like the devil trip. What is, wait, what is this? What is this? Uh, what is this meme you're pushing here, Khan? I don't know. But yeah, that is a cool tree pattern. And apparently, no science can explain it. All right, I think it's time. Let's go to North America. Now we'll start in Canada, actually, with the Halifax Citadel. Uh, where's the haunted part? Can't find it. But let's look at this castle. Like, really, we're just here to look at castles, right? It's a place in North Carolina that's a circle in the middle of the woods where nothing grows. During winter, too. Oh, look at this. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. Look at the choice paths. Fascinating. Like, obviously, this is the main choice path. And why do people go this way to get around something? Pretty cool though. Uh, let's, let's go to ground level. Oh, look, they're standing. There's boys. Ghosts. Can we look at Fairmont Bank String Springs Hotel? It's in Canada too. We absolutely can. Thank you for reposting it. I was about, after we went to this place, I was about to scroll up and see what you had written. Uh, no, I don't have to. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Actually, um, We did a music stream last week and we did some Danny Elfman and Thriller, but we could have done more sp spooky style music, you know, like skeletons and whistles like this, you know, that would have been fun. I think we did something like that last year. I like doing, I like doing themed music. We did like a whole month of Christmas music. Um, when was that? Was that two years ago? Was that two years ago? That was two years ago. Oh my God. I remember what we did last year. I mean, it's a cool castle. It's very pretty from above. Let's go back. Yeah, oh my gosh, look at this. You got these little points so people can look down. How long have you been at this? Um, let me, let me, let me check. Let me check my, um,
wait how do i get my my page my page view your channel One of my first videos was a set of running diaries. Uh, that was just me doing like running for 30 days and posting a very short stream of my results. My God, the stream was so simple back then. But that was April 2021. So I guess it's been like two and a half years. Not bad. Not bad. We must go further. My older daughter, Kyrie, loves Christmas music. Two subs in the back, she made me crank Christmas songs all December. Based, based, taste. The, the tides of history. I imagine being in a place like this, you really do feel like the weight of history, right? Like just think about this rock right here. Somebody stacked this rock here and all the rocks on top of it, like way long ago. It's a nice liminal space. What's the opposite of a liminal space? That's how I feel in historical places. It's not like a space that has no character, but a space that's like overwhelming with character. Anti-liminal spaces. We stand. Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas Goes Hard on subs. It's a good song. It's a good song. This man looks like he's getting arrested by a Scot Scottish guy. Why are they wearing kilts? I guess it's not always winter. This was taken in May. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the photo that I love, uh, where is it? Where'd you go? This was taken in February. History comes crashing through your veins, chocolate rain. Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, scrolling up so I can highlight Venom's request. Fairmont Bamp, badass motherfucker. Springs Hotel. Ooh, look at this place. Chocolate, have you seen Chocolate Rain for years? I'd actually recommend going back and giving it a listen and paying attention to the lyrics because it turns out that Hazan Day is actually a pretty cool guy and uh, the lyrics are very meaningful. It's about the inability to express your emotions and the uh, rose of toxic masculinity. Especially black talk masculinity. But yeah, uh, he's released a few other songs that are also equally based. <laughs> Legit good artist. And also, yes, it is important to, to lean away from the microphone when you breathe in. This is gorgeous. Gorgeous hotel. Holy shit. Uh, bro, I did not know he was in graduate school when he made Chocolate Rain. I've seen an interview with him about it and another song he did. It was very emotional the way he describes things. Was interesting, kind of intense. Yeah, he definitely has that kind of. Um, intensity to them, right? All right. I'm just curious.
We could get the Fairmont Gold two bedroom suite. It is on the fourth and fifth floors. It accommodates four to four people and has a granite bathroom. Oh, it's huge. Oh, it's absolutely lovely. Uh, I'm just gonna pull this over here. Mm-hmm. Look at that. We can go on a virtual tour. This is like Google Maps uh, Street View. Right? The granite bathroom. There was a big murder-suicide at this place I read that made it more famous and haunted. Oh, well, I mean, since we're reading about haunted places, we have to read about that, you know. The beds. Very nice. All right, who's cuddling? If we're going on a road trip, who's cuddling? Me and Khan and uh, Venom and Crundle, probably. Uh, and they include a coffee and tea maker. Okay. Now I'm gonna click this button. We're gonna we're gonna be fucking blown away. Check availability and rates. can stay with the wife. Oh, why am I disconnected? You get the uh, out of here. Hello? You? It says I'm disconnected. Am I disconnected? My internet seems to be working otherwise. Right? Load something. It worked. What's happening? Uh, I think I got disconnected. My internet is I know. Which be wild. Hello. It's the black man's. <laughs> uh oh, hi. I'm back. <laughs> Just gonna look outside my window real quick. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're fine. Ugh. Heart, you FBI, please don't get us. Um, okay. I just want to show you the $3,500 room. They help me. Oh, it's a video? Nah. Sorry, bro. Let's take the, let's take the tour. Here's, here's the bedroom where Khan and I will complete our murder-suicide. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, let's see, history. see anything about hauntedness. Oh, 
Although the first thing I pull up is like haunted. All right, here we go. The ghosts of Fairmont Bev Springs. This 129 year old hotel has more than a few residents who've checked in, but never checked out. There's the bride. There's Sam the Bellman, and there's a bunch of haunted rooms. All hell mighty Sir Isaac, minion supreme of the Google Street Hopper, finder of history, seeker of haunting. <laughs> it's true. Welcome, brother. The Barad, probably the most famous of all specters residing in the Fairmont Vamp Springs. She's even featured on her own stamp and coin. The story of the ghost bride dates back to the late 1920s. The story goes that on the young couple's wedding day, the bride, decked out in her wedding gown, descended on one of the hotel's marble staircases. Something startled her, causing her to slip and fall. Some say she caught the heel in the hem of her dress. Others say her dress brushed up against a candle's flame. Whatever the cause, the end result is the bride died on those steps. Since then, hotel staff and guests alike have reported seeing a veiled figure moving up and down the stairs, or seeing a figure in a wedding dress dancing in a ballroom upstairs, pining for the first dance with her husband she never had. Uh, it looks like they're not minted coins anymore. Dang. What, what, what is this? There's a Canadian one ounce pure silver glow in the dark coin. Canada's unexplained phenomenon, the Duncan inc incident? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Dude, Canada. <laughs> Pretty nice. Sam the Bellman. Stories of Sam McCauley, a genial old Scotsman who was head bellman during the 60s and 70s, have been circulating around the hotel since his passing in 1975. Supposedly, Sam is a helpful sort of spirit, and most stories involving him mention some service he's provided to staff or guests. One incident involved two elderly women calling the bell desk for assistance after they found their key would not work. The regular bellman was occupied with other duties and didn't respond for 15 minutes. By the time he arrived at their door, it was unlocked. One of the women said an older bellman in a plaid jacket matching Sam's description exactly had helped them. Other stories including guests, including guests seeing Sam haunting his old office, now a guest room, on the mezzanine floor, as well as seeing apparitions and feeling cold spots on the 6th, 7th, or ninth floors of the hotel. While they'd rather not mention room numbers, there are specific rooms that staff say are haunted. Guests have reported seeing the pillows yanked out from under their heads while they slept, or even being pushed off the bed by uns some unseen entity. Whatever spirits haunt this room, it's safe to say that they can't rest in peace, they want to make sure you won't either. Another room that shall remain numberless has a story with many variations, but the gist of it is that an entire family was murdered there, and ever since, guests in the room have reported being awakened by screaming. When they turned on the lights, they would see bloody handprints on the mirror. Depending on who tells the story, the handprints either disappeared before hotel staff had a chance to clean them, or wouldn't come off at all. In any case, if you visit the floor where the room should be, you'll find it's been completely covered, and it's inaccessible from the hallway, which is either to keep guests out of the supposedly haunted room, or due to renovations, depending on who you ask. Is it, is it this one? Is it the, the Terrace Suite? Can we pay $3,500 a night just to get some ghosts? Get some ghostly action? Poor Sam. Even in death, he's still showing up for work. SMH. So where's this one? We're still at the Banff Springs Hotel. Uh, but I think it's about time that we went to the good old USA, where there are apparently a ton of them. <laughs> okay, let's start with the Stanley Hotel in Colorado. The Stanley Hotel. Uh, 
Take me there. Take me there, Google Maps. Yes, that was a very good suggestion. All right, let's uh, drop down on a spot. Oh. Looks like it's still being used as a hotel. I mean, why wouldn't it be? It's free publicity. So that's the Stanley Hotel. Let's see. Uh, what's creepy about the Stanley Hotel? Saying, you don't need me? You don't need me? What are you saying? You don't need me? During 1974, American horror writer Stephen King and his wife Tabitha spent one night at the Stanley Hotel. At the time of his visit, King was writing a book with the working title Darkshine, but was not satisfied with the amusement park setting. On the advertisement of locals who suggested a resort hotel located in Estes Park, Stephen and Tabitha King found themselves checking in at the Stanley Hotel just as its other guests were checking out, because the hotel was shutting down for the winter season. After checking in, King roamed the halls and went down to the hotel bar where drinks were served by a bartender named Grady. As he returned to his room, number 217, he imagined his imagination was fired up by the hotel's remote location its grand size and its eerie desolation. Later, when King went to the bathroom and pulled back the pink curtain for the tub, which had claw feet, he thought, what if somebody died here? At that moment, I knew I had a book. So this is the hotel that inspired The Shining. Not bad. Where are people getting all these 360 cameras? So, did they actually film? satisfied with Stanley Kubrick's 1980 film, The Shining, and went on to make a, a three-part miniseries. Which was filmed at the Stanley Hotel. That's wild. I mean, if we're talking about two, like, the egotistical giants of our era, Stephen King and Stanley Kubrick are definitely up there. Right. Like, can you imagine watching a Stanley Kubrick film and thinking like, nah, not good enough. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do it better at the original location. Despite a peaceful early history, the Stanley Hotel has gained a reputation as a setting for paranormal activity. It is frequently named one of the most haunted hotels in the United States. Woohoo! That's nice. Alright, next up. Eastern State Penitentiary. Oh, what's this? Yo, look at that. Somebody got the drone shot. Why would you build a building like this? How, how many places can we walk around inside? Ooh, boy. 
The first thing I think of when I see this sort of architecture is how conducive to mental health and wellness. Oh my gosh, look at the tiny little doors. Did people go on there? They did. It's right, it's right, guess what? Hello, uh, what is it? Uh, did you purchase a new video game? Did you, uh, have you visited here? <laughs> Did you have a good holiday? I finally got prescription lenses for my PSVR 2. Ooh, time to dive into motion sickness kingdom. Let's go. That is actually cool. God, can you imagine like, that's your window to the world. Oof. I don't think I need to look up anything about this place to know that it's creepy. There's this freaking hallway. The 1945 tunnel escape. Ooh. Prison plaster worker Clarence Feindest spent about one year digging a tunnel out of cell number 68 to your right. So close. VR No Man's Sky Hardcore Mode Run Go. That's awesome. He was serving a five and a half year to 11 year sentence for burglary, blah, 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 burglary, larceny, and forgery, plus the remainder of the seven and a half to 15 year sentence for which he had been paroled. The escape was planned by Kleindenst and his cellmate, William Russell. They dug into the wall of their cell, 15 feet down, 97 feet under the courtyard, and 15 feet up to freedom. They equipped the tunnel with lights and shored it with wood bracing. By April 3rd, 1945, the tunnel was complete. 10 inmates joined the escape on the way to breakfast that morning. One of the latecomers was flamboyant bank robber and escape artist, Slick Willie Sutton. The 12 inmates emerged from the tunnel at the corner of 22nd and Fairmont Avenue and scattered into the neighborhood. Slick Willie Sutton was captured minutes later, two blocks from the penitentiary. He later claimed pub public credit for the tunnel's design and construction. Eindens was out for three hours. An additional three to six years were later added to his sentence. All the escaped inmates were eventually recaptured. The prison staff filled the tunnel with ash from the prison incinerator. Why is there a prison incinerator? And they were all captured too. Damn. My dudes almost made it to freedom. Look at this long ass hallway. I'm just gonna leave this up on, on screen for a little bit. Uh, The crisis of race and incarceration has only grown worse since Eastern State closed in 1970. One has to wonder. All right, 
let's change up our aesthetics a little bit and go to the James M. Nederlander Theater. Formerly known as the Oriental Theater, but you can see why they do not want to uh, keep that name. History. It was uh, built on the site of the Iroquois Theater, site of the Iroquois Theater fire, the deadliest theater fighter and deadliest single building fire in U.S. history. After the fire's recorded death toll reached at least 600 fatalities, over double the death toll of the Great Chicago Fire. City officials closed all theaters in the city for inspection. Following the incident, city enacted new laws that addressed alleyway and exit standards, scenery, fireproofing, and occupancy limits. Whoa, are you saying that regulations save lives? Incredible. So, built on the site of the deadliest single building fire in U.S. history. Uh, and up until 9-11, it was the deadliest single building disaster in American history. After the fire, it was alleged that fire inspectors have been bribed with free tickets to overlook code violations. Hmm. So, I mean, you can 100% imagine a place that looks like this built on the site of a 600 person disaster, absolutely has some haunted stuff going on. Why would you build this? Why'd you build an elephant like that? Just in your haunted theater. Come. That looks like the set to cats. Is that the set to cats? How do I, how do I uh, find more information about this photo? I can't find more information about this photo. But I mean, that looks like cats, doesn't it? It's got the, it's got the cats vibe. I imagine there's, oh, there's some photospheres in here. That is not where I wanted to go. Show me inside the James M. Niederlander Theater. I just don't feel like any of these are the right one. Why are there so many photospheres right here? Is 
Is the old Navy that important? What am I missing here? It's an old Navy. Why is there so many? Doing this in the city is hard because there's, why are so many photospheres? Yeah. I don't think that this is gonna be. Give me some 360 views, here we go. Carefully blurring out almost everyone. Oh, I guess they did Wicked here. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is in 2018. Hmm. I think I might have gone to this production. Uh, hmm, okay. Well, that's fun. Put on your barefoot shoes. Yeah, okay, I've definitely been here and I'm pretty sure I went to that exact production of Wicked. Wild. Here's the stage view. Yep. Okay, I, I've definitely been in this theater before. I had no idea that it was full of ghosts. But then again, most theaters are full of ghosts. Did you know that? Ghosts love theaters. All right, next up, the RMS Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. Um, give me some, give me some photos. That's a good photo. Oh, it's Christmas time. The Coca-Cola bear, of course. Can't have Christmas without capitalism. We must celebrate the, uh, we must celebrate the passing of the seasons in the old ways. Um, let's see. Modern legends. Ah, you love it when the Wikipedia page has a section dedicated to modern legends. Let's go. All right. Oh, following Queen Mary's permanent docking in California, claims were made that the ship was haunted. Time Magazine included the Queen Mary among its top 10 haunted places. One of the staterooms is alleged to be haunted by the spirit of a person supposedly murdered there. The Queen Mary Hotel promotes Suite Rooms B340, a former third-class cabin, as notoriously haunted. Mm. Here's the command room. Pretty cool. The Queen Mary also operates a number of, non of commercial tours that include haunted attraction experiences. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's being pushed as a haunted attraction. While efforts to explain and preserve the factual history of the ship are somehow pushed to the wayside. Hmm. One legend claims the little girl haunts the first and second class pools. However, 
No deaths have been found to be recorded in either pool. Another legend is that two daughters murdered by their father, father in 1959 haunt room B-474 in the surrounding corridors. Uh, however, the room was originally two second-class cabins before uh, 1967, and that the same story happened in Roanoke, Virginia, not aboard the ship. Interesting. Lots of stories, but a lot of skepticism as well. Oh, we already saw the inside there. I mean, it is cool to just see a ship, you know? It's a cool ship. We like ships, we like cool ships. We can go up the stairs. We can go up the stairs again. Maybe. No. Yes. There's the helm. Of the bridge! Get to the bridge! You know, it makes perfect sense. I always think of bridges on starships, right? Like uh, spaceships and Star Trek, stuff like that get to the bridge, but starships are just based on sailing ships, so it makes perfect sense that ships would also have a bridge. Also, the wound in green is gone now. Spooky. I wonder what all these lines are for. I literally just there for support. I mean, I guess ships get pretty windy, don't they? Pretty windy. Let's go to the ballroom. The haunted ballroom. You know, they should make that painting into like a, a Hieronymus Bosch if they if they're able to. Nothing says creepy like Hieronymus Bosch. Maybe we could do a haunted art stream this year. I already have my streams figured out for uh, this year, though. We'll be... Uh, next up, we'll be doing some creepypasta readings. And then this weekend, we're going to be playing some indie horror games. Now, this one is just the Gettysburg Battlefield in Pennsylvania. I don't know exactly where the haunted part of this, but you know, it's a battlefield, right? Probably pretty haunted. Eh. Let's go to like a legit haunted house in Gettysburg. The Farnsworth House Inn. Give me some pictures. What's the story behind the Har Farnsworth House Inn? The Schultz family claims that the inn has been haunted by as many as 16 spirits at one point in time, and that each spirit has had its own distinct personality and name. The inn has several rooms that are supposed to be hot spots for specific spiritual activity for a particular ghost, such as the Sarah Black Room, which is supposed to be one of the most active rooms and will have spirits that can be photographed from the street. Well, see any spirits from the street?
It looks very cozy though. I mean, this restaurant looks great. It's a classic, classic, uh, you know, Southern heritage site when you've got one of these glass cases just loaded up with artifacts. Here's the view we saw earlier. In the garden, Sweeney's Tavern. Yeah, I mean, this would be a pretty creepy place to stay, wouldn't it? I mean, look at that cat. Artifacts are always epic. Agreed. Think about, like, how many disparate places these, this collection of stuff came from. All over the place. We didn't need all of it. But, I mean, it's history. Do you think you'd be able to sleep in one of these places? Do you think that you would be able to fall asleep? Or do you think that you would stay up thinking about whether or not this Abraham Lincoln picture is looking at you? Ooh. We've done a lot of theaters and parks, so I'm going to skip a couple of these. But let's go to the Winchester Mystery House in California. Okay, now this looks like the Knives Out House. <laughs> What's the deal with the Winchester Mystery House? Oh my gosh. The, the Wikipedia page has an entire section on legend and lore. All right. The belief that Winchester built her house in its strange, maze-like manner to confuse and keep spirits from harming her, and that her sanity was questionable started in the mid-1890s and has grown in scale since her death. The doors and windows that open to nothing, the unusually shallow stairs, the stairs that end in a ceiling, interior barred windows and trap doors in the floor are used to confirm Winchester's spirituality and poor state of mind. Uh, the bell tower was used to call workmen and serve as a fire alarm. Do we see the bell tower? That kind of looks like a bell tower, doesn't it? But maybe we, from a better angle, can see a bell tower clearly. Indeed, looks like a bell tower right up there. Fanciful claims later arose that it used, was used to summon spirits. Residents heard ghostly music. When, there's rumors that Winchester held parties for the spirits in her home that featured lavish dishes served on gold plates. The gold plates have never been found. Oh, apparently it's the same person of the Winchester Rifles. At the turn of the 20th century, the most common belief that still persists regarding Winchester's house building was that she felt tremendous guilt resulting from all the deaths. Who are these people? 
It's just a, okay. We got a good shot of the organ, but this did not need to be a 360 view. It's just somebody taking a picture of their family. Now that's the courtroom. Oh, she looks like the tour guide actually. She's standing on the other side of the the rope, which definitely means she's probably the tour guide. Let's just admire the bed. This bed. According to lore, architectural features such as 13 bedrooms, 13 bathrooms, and certain windows in certain rooms are due to Winchester's apparent fascination with the number 13. Ooh. Oh, I guess I'm a pirate now. It's a pirate hat. <laughs> hey, Max. Welcome, welcome. We're reading about the Winchester Mystery House. Visitors and tour guides claim to have experienced cold spots, footsteps, cooking smells, odd sounds, whispering, doors and windows slamming, and feelings of being watched. There is no evidence that the house is haunted. And yet, people share these stories. Even now, on this very stream, Oh yeah, them's, them's some rifles. Them's some rifles, for sure. Ooh, now here's a cool looking room. Look at this. Oh, it's a shooting gallery. A room designed to look cool. Get it, orange shirt guy. Oh, here's the same room, but they put up a Christmas tree. Can you imagine having your job being decorating these rooms? That'd be fun. You just like change out the Christmas tree or the uh, what have you for each season, right? That could be a lot of fun. A historical decorator. Very, very important job in order to make people feel historical. There's Marion's suite, and there's Marion's suite reversed in the mirror. Doesn't this mirror look like it's changing, like... Looks like it's actually following it. I mean, it's the pixels trying to adjust to the camera, but, you know wild be bad uh all right let's look at another house the lizzie borden house i don't know if you know this one but there's a nursery rhyme lizzie borden uh, took an axe and gave her, uh, let's see, Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her father 40 wax, and when her dreadful work was done, she gave her mother 41. No, it's the other way around. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax, and when she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. Yes. So apparently, uh, this place is full of ghosts. Full of ghosts. <laughs> but apparently, this is where. You, saying, you don't need me? What are you saying? You don't need ghosts? Oh, there's a cat in the bed. Cat spotted. <laughs> I really, okay. Remember this for next year, but next year, whatever my costume is, we're gonna make 
a proper soundboard where people can select the sound that they want. And we'll, we'll do it for like super cheap points. Kind of like how Khan does his uh, sound redeems. Or maybe we can even do them for free since it's the season. I think 10 points is reasonable though. 10 points is essentially free. 10 points. Reckon Jack Skellington for next year? That's a pretty good idea. I don't mind that at all. Teddy Bear spotted. <laughs> Jack Skellington's a good costume idea. So that's it, huh? The Lizzie Borden house. Uh, bruh, how do we, how do we uh, make our house feel more haunted? Just throw a Ouija board in the, uh, in the corner there. We'll get a player piano that occasionally just plays notes randomly. We'll get a coffee machine. Then everybody will be so jittery that they'll think they're shaking in their boots. Love these old stoves, though. I bet this stove cooked so well. But I mean, obviously, maintaining a stove with firewood would be a pain in the butt. Wow, there's lots of... Lots of 360 photos in here. Toilet! Are we allowed to show toilets on Twitch? Twitch gods, straight me down. Okay, I think we're allowed. I bet they don't even tell you which room it happened in. I bet, I bet, I bet they happened in different rooms though. Like, you got, if, if you're, if you're a, a young woman, looking to murder your family members. You gotta be sneaking up on them, right? One at a time. All right. Looks like a hymnal. Classic. Some of these are, some of these are uh, very similar to previous ones. Why am I getting real estate results here? No, I don't want this. Okay. So this is apparently all the photos we can find. Okay. Of the Keddy cabin. The Ketty murders are an unsolved quadruple homicide that occurred on the night of April 11th and 12th, or the night of April 11th, 1981 in Ketty, California. Man, I should have read about that one in my Wikipedia creepy reading stream, because there is a uh, not a whole lot of Google Maps going on in here. All right, next up we've got the Old Alton Bridge.
you get a better view of it. From the bridge. All right. Locally, the bridge is known as Goatman's Bridge and is said to be haunted by a half-man, half-goat figure called Goatman. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Hold up. Wait, wait a minute. According to legend, Goatman is a creature resembling a goat-human hybrid. Wait a minute. Often credited with canine deaths, reported to take refuge in Maryland. Oh, so it's a different Goatman than the Goatman. The belief is based on the legend of a black goat farmer named Oscar Washburn, who was said to have moved his family to a residence just north of the bridge. A few years later, Washburn, having become known as a dependable and honest businessman and dubbed the Goatman by locals, displayed a sign on Alton Bridge reading, This way to the Goatman. But the success of a black man was still unwelcome to many, and in August 1938, Klansmen in the local government crossed the bridge and kidnapped Washburn from his family. Oh, they hung a noose from old Alton Bridge and after securing it around his neck, threw him over the side. When they looked down to see if he had died, the noose was empty. In a panic, they returned to his family home and slaughtered his wife and children. Locals warn that if you cross the bridge at night without headlights, as the clansmen are said to have done, you will be met on the other side by the goat man. Ghostly figures and strange lights are said to have appeared in the surrounding woods, as well as reports of visitors being touched, grabbed, and having rocks thrown at them. Reckon you played Flappy Goat? Dude would probably have hated Flappy Goat. He was a goat herder. Five ten limit, very important. Yeah, see, there's a better bridge now, apparently. The old Alton Bridge and the new Alton Bridge. Yeah, see, now this is, this is like, I just want to say, <laughs> we all hate Flappy Goat. I'm so glad that that chapter of my life is closed. This is the proper way to preserve your history, right? You don't keep using the old stuff, but you maintain the old stuff and give people the new thing to use, right? And in the case of buildings, right, you can't really like replace the land that a building is on. So you're just giving up on the building. But if it's like a library or a theater, you have to build a new one. You can't just say like, this is our theater, this is our library. It's dangerous because it's 10,000 years old, right? Get out of here. Oh, okay. I know what we're doing next. We are going to Mothman's Town. Have you seen this statue? The legend of Mothman? The world's only Mothman museum. Let's go. In West Virginia folklore, the Mothman is a humanoid creature reportedly seen in the Point Pleasant area from Dece November 15th, 1966 to December 15th, 1967. And now there's an annual festival. Blah, 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 yeah. Uh, analysis, history, no. We wanna know about the festival. The first festival was held in 2002. Uh, the Mothman Festival began after brainstorming creative ways for people to visit Point Pleasant. The group organizing the event chose the Mothman to be the center of the festival due to its uniqueness and as a way to celebrate its local legacy in the town. According to the organizer, 
The average attendance for the Mothman Festival is an estimated 10 to 12,000 people per year. A 12 foot tall metallic statue of the creature, as seen here, created by artist and sculptor Bob Roach, was unveiled in 2003. The Mothman Museum and Research Center opened in 2005. The festival is held on the third weekend of every September. Oh, not too long ago. Hosting guest speakers, vendor exhibits, pancake eating contests, and hay ride tours of locally notable areas. Dude, let's go to the Mothman Festival and eat pancakes. I don't know why, but that just sounds like so much fun. The world's only Mothman Museum. You can get your picture taken in the Mothman uh, face frame. Lovely. And there it is, the legend of the Mothman. Check out his butt. Apparently he has a butt. He does have a butt. Dude's got a bit of a dumpy. And he's got abs. Mm -hmm. This is now a Mothman fan channel. Uh, let's see. I will say I've been feeling under the weather a little bit lately, and I'm starting to get a little bit out of um, out of energy. However, we have to go do some stuff in the most haunted state in the USA. Right? We have to go to Ohio. Ohio haunted locations. <laughs> okay, well, some of these are like obviously uh, attractions, right? Here, the Dent Schoolhouse. Oh, this just looks like a haunted something. Look at this kid hugging the leg of the monster. Incredible. No, that's cute. I just get the feeling that this is a haunted house. One second more and just a little bit more. The Trail of Nightmares. Ticketed. What is this photo? This is a way better photo. The Brewer Hotel. Yeah, that looks like a haunted house, man. Like, for real. That's, this is apparently the only photo by the owner. Okay, this is giving some real spooky vibes. Real spooky vibes. But it's a different flavor of horror, right? It's like almost modern, almost modern. It do be looking spooky. It's a very different feeling than those old castles. Like this is like derelict. Human. 
horror. This is this is the the left behind. Whereas Europe is more about ghosts haunting from the past, this is more about monsters that lurk, right? Can we do like Ohio cryptid sightings? There's the Ohio State Reformatory. Which is supposed to be the classic haunted place. Oh, it's it's the prison from Shawshank Redemption. Indeed it is. That's just straight and up, straight up and down the place from Shawshank Redemption. You know, I thought it would be closer to like the Ohio State University, but I guess anywhere in Ohio can call themselves the Ohio State something if they're the state funded thing, right? You know, for a place of worship, it doesn't really inspire a lot. James Lockhart was here. Lockhart was serving, was that, seven to 15 years for assault with intent to kill? In 1960, he took his own life by setting himself on fire in this cell with lighter fluid and a match. He was 22. Jeez. Information. Yep, that room looks familiar. This room looks familiar too. Man! I think that's the guy from the movie too. A little cut out guy from the movie. Yeah, this is just a guided tour of the Shawshank Redemption really. held his camera at an angle and now it's like going bonkers. Cool angle though. Man, this also looks like a place where you could have like a D and D fight. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, no, stop. I'm kind of disappointed that there's not more, um, like, haunted locations that aren't just uh, attractions. Where's all the haunted stuff, Ohio? Where's the haunted stuff? Oh well, we do have to go to that one place. You know the place. Where is it? Wait, where is it? It's somewhere around here. I want to find it. You know what I'm talking about.
Think, think, think. I guess I'll just look it up. Field of corn. I was probably pretty close. Oh, it's down here, okay. Yeah, we gotta check out the field of corn. Look at that, it's corn. Just, just corn as far as the eye can see. Concrete corn. Uh, sorry, I just messed up OPS a little bit. Just a little bit. Nothing serious. Just corn. Corn by day, corn by night. It's not haunted or anything. I just think it's hilarious. Look at the corn. People making out in the cornfields. Probably. If you want a picture of Midwest heritage, show people this. This is the truth about the Midwest. It's all corn, always has been. <laughs> There's gonna be like um, haunted places in Ohio. Yeah, I'm not looking for haunted houses in Ohio, thank you. Looking for haunted places in Ohio. Oh, there's a lighthouse. Let's check out a lighthouse. We have not seen a lighthouse today. The South Bass Island Lighthouse. There it is. What is so haunted about this place? Its first keeper, Harry Riley, and his assistant, Sam Anderson, was brief. Concerns about a smallpox outbreak on the island were realized in August 1898, though it, as it happened, the cases were mild and there were no death. Nevertheless, a newspaper report on September 1st told of Anderson. Oh, good day, Ray. Hey, good day, good day. Yo. Silam Silam. Whoa. Early, early, uh, early end for you tonight, huh? Uh, welcome, Raiders. Hello, hello. My name is Isaac Anzu. Uh, let me remove my pirate hat. Uh, as you can see, we're celebrating Halloween. And, uh, I am dressed up as Minion from the hit movie Megamind. Uh, thank you so much for the raid. Uh, let's see, you were playing Seven Days to Die. We were playing with the chickens and ended on what like felt was a very buggy mission. Nice, nice. Yeah, sometimes those game-breaking bugs really take the wind out of your sails, don't they? Well, today we're looking at the South Bass Island Lighthouse. Um... All right. On September 1st, 1898, a newspaper report told of Anderson, who had been hired just the previous month, drinking heavily out of fear of smallpox and hiding himself in the lighthouse's basement, where he kept a number of snakes. He then emerged and threw himself into the lake, shouting, God save them all. His body was recovered the following day. 
On the same day that this report happened, Harry Riley, his boss, was picked up by the police in Sandusky, apparently insane. He was committed to the state mental hospital and died there the following March. Tragedy struck again in 1925 when the keeper Charles B. Duggan was killed in a fall from a cliff on the west side of the island. Ooh. So one strange, drunken, snake-riddled night, both the light keeper and his assistant died or were driven insane under mysterious circumstances. Ooh. Do you have any pictures of the inside? Inside pictures? No. Just this very cool 360 view. Uh, and there we see the uh, the sea serpent trail, uh, naturally, naturally. Pretty cool, po pretty cool photos. Yeah, we were looking up um, haunted places in the most haunted of places, Ohio. The Moonville Tunnel. It's very graffiti laden. So what's so haunted about the Moon the Moonville Tunnel? There's a bully named Baldy Keaton, who are both uh, haunting an abandoned train tunnel near the no longer existing town of Moonville. Moonville. Was curious what was going on here? Yeah, we're just uh, exploring some spooky locations for Haunted Halloween. It's my Halloween horror half month hot couture. Which is really my way of saying uh, we're just doing some some haunted haunted spooky streams for uh, for October because it's that time. Let's read some graffiti. Dabs all day. Just some uh, repair markings. Lots of graffiti here. Now here's a good one. So apparently there is some ghosts here. Lots of people just write their names with graffiti. If you were a graffiti artist, what would your tag be? I mean, it'd be your name, right? But would you put any symbols with it? I'd put it. Lion with dragon wings and goat horns. Yeah! Ooh, okay, we also have to check this one out. Uh, as you know, uh, we love gazebos. And apparently there's a haunted gazebo in Cincinnati, Ohio. 
Let's look at pictures. This is the gazebo. Barely looks like anything. That's the gazebo. Yeah. It's a nice gazebo. All right. Now let's read about the Remus incident. In 1925, popular Cincinnati attorney and bootlegger George Remus was indicted for thousands of violations of the Volstead Act, which is uh, the amendment to prohibit alcoholic drinks in the U.S. Convicted by a jury that made its decision in under two hours and given a two-year federal prison sentence. He spent two years in Atlanta Federal Penitentiary for bootlegging. While he was in prison, Ramus befriended another inmate and told him his wife, whom he adored, Imogene, had control over his money. The inmate was an undercover prohibition agent, Franklin Dodge. Dodge resigned his job and started an affair with Imogene. The pair liquidated Ramus's assets and hid as much of the money as possible in addition to attempting to deport Remus and even hiring a hitman to murder Remus for $15,000. In addition, Remus's huge Fleischmann distillery was sold by Imogene, who gave her risen husband only $100 of the multi-million dollar empire he created. We've definitely got a, a story here. Imogene then filed for divorce from Remus in late 1927. On the way to court in October 6th, 1927, for the finalization of the divorce, Remus had his driver chase the cab carrying Imogene and her daughter through Eden Park in Cincinnati, finally forcing it off the road. Remus jumped out and fatally shot Imogene in the abdomen in front of the Springhouse gazebo in Eden Park. Ooh. George Remus acted as his own lawyer and defended himself as a man driven mad by his wife's adultery, thievery, and betrayal. He was ultimately acquitted in one of the first successful cases of the insanity defense. Legend has it that the ghost of Imogen Remus haunts the gazebo. Since that time, there have been reports of a ghost wearing a black dress in and around the gazebo, gazing at a reflection in the pool nearby. Alleged sightings are usually at dusk in the autumn season. Of course, October 6th. As a wee slime in a new house, I kept going to parents' rooms at night crying. Dad decided to sleep in the room for a few nights. Every night he felt something jump on his back as if pushing him down until it stopped. Years later, one of his friends said the same thing happened to him and it was the house next door to the one we lived in. Spooky. I have heard stories like that. Pressure, strange feelings in, in certain rooms of houses. Oh. That's my haunted house contribution. Well, I'm not going to dock to you by looking up uh, whatever house you were in. But this has been the strange stories of haunted locations. Uh, my favorite one, let's see. Um, is there like a history of recents? Yeah, dude, this, um, Fairmont Banff Springs uh, Hotel was absolutely sick. Like, look at this place. Look at it. So cool. It's basically a little resort town at this point. But apparently there's quite a few people who have uh, died in this very hotel, including a bellman who can't stop showing up for work. Talking about pressure and ghost sleep paralysis is the worst thing I've ever experienced. True, I've had it a few times myself in that half dreaming state where you can't move your body and they're surrounded by like demon dogs and some such things, right? <laughs> I only remember trying to sleep 
at the end of my parents' bed for a few nights. Hmm. Maybe you appease the, the feeling somehow. <laughs> Makes your mind go wild with anything possible. True, true, true. Yeah, we were talking a little bit earlier about how I'm not a big believer in the supernatural, but I'm a, a absolutely big believer in the idea of the stories you tell yourself manifesting physically or visually even for you, right? I mean, the world itself is just a hallucination that your brain is interpreting at near instant speed in order to convince yourself that reality exists. So if you tell your brain certain stories, of course it's going to embellish the world in those ways. Our mind is the most powerful weapon we have. It can make anything real. I believe I have a million dollars. <laughs> I believe. Powerful. Powerful. Um, but I think it's time for us to make our departure. You will dream about having millions now. That's true. <laughs> what was my dream last night? I had an insanely detailed dream last night. Uh, I always write down my dreams, so I'm just gonna pull up my little journal and, and read it. Oh yeah, okay. So I was playing in like this Halo or Doom style FPS with a time machine plot. Gotta get to that underground facility. Um, but we had to go back and do an escort m mission on lower difficulty, but hilariously, uh, when you lower the difficulty of the game, it stops being actual monsters and guns and just becomes people in shitty costumes with pretend guns, like holding fake guns. <laughs> uh, I also, oh man, I mean, I also had a dream that Robin really wanted to play No Man's Sky with me, but we were all setting up a Deep Rock Galactic uh, land party and we had to convince him to get it and play uh <laughs> if you're still in chat robin we should play deep rock galactic sometime um looks like there are quite a lot of people still awake Deep Rock Galactic on your Xbox? Mm -hmm. That sounds like fun. All right, we are going to raid... Um, oh wait, no. She's been streaming for seven hours. We're not gonna raid her because she needs to go to bed. Um, let's see. All right, we're going to raid a friend who is a vampire YouTuber named Masked Introvert. <laughs> My phone hates me today, so many typos. Nothing a little friendship can't fix. Uh, Masked Introvert is a friend of the channel um, and a fellow telonym enjoyer. So I'm gonna throw up the Raid message, which we'll is used in the normal raid message today. Vampire VTuber suits the stream, right? You know, you know that the 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 VTubers out there with spooky avatars are celebrating spooky season, and you just gotta you gotta support people. But thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for especially raiding Thylime. Uh, sorry, we only got about 15 minutes here, but thank you so much for entrusting your community with me and. Uh, <laughs> we'll definitely hit you up as well sometime. Until then, we're going to go raid Mass Introvert, grab that message in the chat, and join me in saying hi to a friendly vampire VTuber. 
Next time we should talk about vampires and the myths they came from. Next time, in two days time, this time, we're going to be doing a creepy pasta reading stream. So look forward to that. Um, in order to continue the celebration of the Halloween or half month Pocator. And I will see you then. So until then, my name is Isaac Anzi. Thank you so much for joining and farewell.